Folks, one of my top favorite stocks this year is dropping like a rock. Soundtown AI stock ticker symbol SOUN is down now nearly a third from its recent highs. Another week of this and perhaps it will be below our original callout price. In today's video, I want to go through a short seller report on it, warning investors to stay away. Reasons why this drop is getting so aggressive, whether it's a dip buy, and some other key information to know. And the only thing I ask in return is that you hit that ravishing like button, turn on the notification bell, and subscribe if you find value in the content. And remember, as always, you must do your own due diligence before buying or selling any kind of stock. If you're the one taking the risk, you got to be the one doing the ultimate frisk. Okay, so context first. What is Soundtown AI? Well, Soundtown AI is a voice AI and speech recognition company founded in 2005. It's known for its natural language understanding, sound recognition, and search technologies. Their business model includes a voice AI developer platform called Houndify, Sound Hound Chat AI for voice-enabled digital assistance, a music recognition app, automotive integrations with major manufacturers, and strategic partnerships for technology licensing. And their business has been getting a lot of attention this year because of its central point in the voice AI segment, as well as NVIDIA's stake in it. And back on February 16th, I made a video explaining why I felt that Soundtown was still a good buy at 3.54 a share as a momentum play with a tight stop loss, especially after that Nvidia stake coverage was starting to spread. And over the coming weeks, my thesis was that you'd see it push over that critical $10 threshold in this current cycle, and it did do that. However, since Nvidia's GTC event, it has been selling off and already evaporated almost a third of its valuation. Now, as we've said, over $10, you were just getting into pure momentum euphoria territory. Territory, great trade with a stop loss, but certainly not a value play at those prices. And on top of that, we were talking about the buy the rumor, sell the news trend likely going to affect Sound Hound. But, but this aggressive downtrend suggests there's more going on here than meets the eye. And it really comes down to this big short seller report that came out. When it comes to AI companies, it's very, very, very easy for investors to not completely understand what they're buying. And so that leaves a lot of wiggle room for people that want to talk you into buying stocks but also people that want to talk you into selling the stocks. It's very easy to convince people that don't understand what they're buying to go ahead and sell it in a panic anytime some bad information comes out, right? And that happens almost every day with many, many different stocks, right? So anyways, here's the report and it starts, Soundtown AI, lies, damned lies, and cheeseburger AI, price target $1. Quote, Soundtown is a failing company peddling lies and deception. It reminds us of the old saying, lies, damned lies, and statistics. Except in Soundtown's case, they don't provide statistics because no amount of messaging could make the numbers look good. After extensive research, we have taken a short position in shares of Soundtown AI, this report represents our opinion and is not financial advice. Don't take financial advice from strangers on the internet. Do your own due diligence. Please read our full disclaimer at the bottom of the report. And of course, at the bottom, it says, amongst other things, that they stand to realize significant financial gains in the event that the price of any stock covered herein declines in price. Now about this, my view on short sellers is they are really like Mother Teresa's. Mother Teresa's with big profit incentives, but Mother Teresa's nonetheless. Think Mother Teresa plus a penthouse and a Bentley and multi-million dollar paydays for her charitable work. Short sellers do us all a public service by revealing negative information about companies right after they shorted them massively. And who cares that a lot of the time the short seller's stock just goes right back up after they're done. But anywho, these short sellers wrote a big piece and let's look at some of their core allegations here. Number one, Soundhound is misleading investors about their AI capability. Number two, to answer many user queries, Soundhound's AI product searches Wikipedia and returns scrapped content. Number three, Soundhound pitches their product as world-class AI on par with chat GPT, but this is not the case. The Houndify product uses commodity speech recognition to search a manually programmed knowledge graph, and it only works for a small set of domains such as weather, sports scores, etc, etc. Number four, Soundhound's products often return incorrect information because the company's software is manually programmed and labor-intensive to maintain. This results in outdated information being returned to users. Number five, Soundhound speech recognition tech is a commodity service that competes with comparable products from Amazon, Google, Microsoft, Apple, Serence, and many others. Soundhound has admitted as much by removing claims about their superiority of their product from their recent 10K. Number six, Soundhound's largest competitor in the automotive space is Sarent. Sarent spends far more on R&D than Soundhound and has been taking their customers. They also go into calling Soundhound a cheeseburger AI since its applications have been used in part to help people order cheeseburgers at restaurants and other various restaurants. And the report goes on for a while and you can read the whole thing if you want. I'll link to it below, but it goes on for a while raising and questioning different parts of Soundhound's business, their leadership, 
revenue and margins, timeliness with filing various supports and other accounting mumbo jumbo. But the core question that this report raises is, is there value in SoundHound AI software or is it just smoke and mirrors? Well, they're trying to paint a picture that quite frankly, their AI is too basic and it's worthless garbage. The allegations suggest that investors in the stock, including NVIDIA, were just very, very highly misled or didn't understand what they're buying. So in order to address whether SoundHound AI's various software actually has real value, you have to start with one question. Does SoundHound AI have clients that use and retain their software? And are those clients spending more and or is SoundTown getting more and more sales of that software? If the answer is yes to both, well, that means that SoundTown AI's software must have value, right? Why would people spend more and more on a software that is basically a cheeseburger AI and nothing else? Well, the overall picture suggests that despite some customer churn, most segments are rapidly improving year over year. I mean, revenue, aka sales, are up 80% year over year. Net income is up 41%. Diluted EPS is up 53%. Net profit margin has improved 67%. Operating income is up nearly 60%. Net change in cash is up nearly 93%. So not only is the company seeing more and more sales, but their margin is going up. Their overall business management management is getting better. At the same time, look, hey, don't get me wrong. I mean, most of these numbers are still in the negative. It is an AI startup after all, but the question of whether this company has a valuable AI that companies want and use is also answered here because 80% more sales year over year is a boom, no matter how you look at it. SoundHound AI, like most AI companies, is a software play. The values in their software. So if they're selling more and more, sure, if they're not super profitable right now, that's not good from a bottom line standpoint. But, but at the end of the day, the value is in their software, right? In terms of the business itself, I've suggested that they should be bought out by NVIDIA or by another big company to help manage the losses and help them scale up. But clearly, I mean, they do have a software that's selling, so that's not the issue here. If you're trying to ask yourself why a bigger company can't just copy what SoundTown did and just do it better, well, one of the things that's compelling about SoundTown is their strong patent protection. They've got some 260 patents with 120 plus granted already and 140 pending. When you're talking about SoundTown's software versus its big tech competitors, well, it quite literally checks a lot of the boxes that others don't. Now, the short sellers branded this company as a burger AI, and the idea is that since a segment of their business includes customers that use them for food ordering at drive through well, oh, this must just be a burger AI company. But food ordering is just one small part of their business. Calling SoundTown AI a burger AI is like calling NVIDIA a Minecraft game company. Sure, Minecraft can run on NVIDIA chips and it's powerful for that game, but it's just one small, small utility of it. So a bigger picture, you combine rapidly growing sales with a robust patent portfolio and a well-rounded platform that's competitive in its space. And it's hard to argue that the underlying value of the software isn't worth a ton in a market where quite frankly, everyone and their mother wants to integrate great AI into their business. Now, at the end of the short seller report, it reads, SoundTown was a promising company with a good story, but after 18 years of losses and multiple pivots, the company still has no clear path to profitability. After accumulating 590 million in losses, the company continues to incinerate investor money. For the past three years, SoundTown's losses have been more than double their revenue. The people running SoundTown are bright, talented individuals, but as often is the case with smart, accomplished people, they're unable to admit that they failed. Okay, so they're trying to paint this picture based on the last three years which include horrible market conditions and a horrible environment for adopting new technologies. But if you look at just the last year, most of their metrics are trending up pretty, pretty aggressively. But also the overarching theme here that they're trying to portray is that whatever money SoundHound AI put into developing its software is useless. It's worthless because guess what? SoundHound AI isn't making a profit. So thus, all of the money they put into their software is not worth anything. That's what you have to believe if you believe these short sellers. But again, if you're buying SoundTown AI, you are buying the underlying technology they developed. If this were in the biotech space, for example, you wouldn't say, oh, I see that this new drug works and is effective. But quite frankly, I mean, with the development costs over the last years, it's still not profitable. So this must be a good short. No, you can't say that because obviously it needs time to go to market and result in a profit when it's just beginning to go to market and really, really exponentially increase in sales after many years of having to invest millions of dollars into development. Well, again, it takes time to start becoming profitable. So certainly I don't believe it's fair to act like this company has done nothing but lose money when really this whole time it's been developing products and investing in R&D and it's now finally shining. Okay, next point I want to discuss our insider sales. Now this one is a little bit more murky. This is another reason why you're seeing a sell-off and this one I would say I have a mixed opinion about. So the fact is some key insiders are selling small portions of their holdings right now. From March 12th to March 21st, you had a range of shares selling in the six, seven, eight, nine dollar region. 
that might tell us that they think the enterprise value is unlikely to retain above those levels, but it's also quite frankly a common pattern of any momentum stock. It's not uncommon that insiders will start selling some shares after their stock has run up a lot, and considering the stock has doubled from a month earlier, I mean, insiders have a huge incentive to sell. And again, overall, the shares sold are a relatively small percentage of the total shares held by each of the insiders, but in some cases, it does seem like insiders like the CEO have made it a trend to offload small portions of shares regularly. Now, look, folks, I'm a capitalist and I look at these companies all the time and I acknowledge that most of the money that insiders make is in indeed selling shares from time to time. And that's just the big incentive structure that they have. In this case, I mean, the shareholders are up a couple hundred percentage points year over year. So, I mean, it makes sense in terms of incentive, especially considering that these insiders know, hey, short sellers are probably going to try to push our price back down to a fifth of this in the next bear cycle. So again, do I like insider sales? Absolutely not. When NVIDIA's team, for example, started selling NVIDIA shares after their run, I didn't like that either. But at the end of the day, it is a part of the business and you'd be hard pressed to find companies without insider sales during momentum cycles. Now, finally, dilution. I'm not a fan of dilution. And even in my favorite companies, I tend to be critical. In this case, you started the year at around 255 million shares. Now you've got 309 million shares. Talking about 46 million shares offered during the uptrend, which has almost certainly helped keep the price lower than it otherwise would have. Now, again, if companies are using this money to further increase their intellectual profit, property and thus your overall equity, great. But of course, it is something to mention that if you are trading this just with the momentum, which I believe is why most people are trading this, then you want to make sure that you're acknowledging these offerings because at the end of the day, you need to have an even tighter stop loss because if they dump a lot of shares, well, the stock price can go down a lot further. But again, when a stock is up so much, the company is obviously going to want to raise capital at higher prices because they know, hey, I don't know how long the stock is going to be up. Quite frankly, markets go up and down. So if I can take the capital now and then use that to further increase shareholder value over the long run, I'm going to do it. Anyways, folks, in conclusion, in my view, Sound has built an excellent software apparatus and that's where the real value is. But at the same time, yes, its business is at an early stage in losing money. And I think leadership hasn't done the best job at prioritizing shareholder value. It would have been nice to see less insider sales and less dilution. It's also true that the company has been around since 2005. And so it would have been nice to see a bit more maturity. But at the same time, I mean, right now is the year where AI stocks have really, really been recognized. And it's only now that you're really starting the next chapter of AI growth. So look, Soundown has a lot of potential right now, and it's hard to overlook the situation of the value that they have underlined because, I mean, it's easy for them to be a buyout candidate. From a chart standpoint, Sound is a killer momentum stock that is experiencing a bearish test right now. Will it get bought up or not? My take is shorts are likely to try to push this down more, and that should continue to bring prices down. But overall, I expect another round of bind up once you get down to lower levels, maybe at three or four, maybe even five. Do I think it's worth four or five dollars a share? Certainly in the long run, I do think it's worth four or five dollars a share. I made a long-winded argument for it being a buy at three dollars and 54 cents, and I'd argue four or five dollars are still good prices. But remember the same, the trend is your friend until the trend bends and it's no longer your friend. The reason sound is being recognized right now is because the overall AI sector is being highlighted in the current bull market. But the minute that stops, you'll have to wait longer for sound to return a long-term value or perhaps get bought up by a bigger player. So in my view, if you're trying to play the moves on this, you want to make sure that you have a tight stop loss because again, when markets shift, this will get decimated. And then when markets go back, it will have a lot of recapitalization opportunity and vice versa. That's just the way that markets flow. Anyways, folks, that caps off today's video. What do you think about Soundtown AI? Is it a buy or a sell? Is it going to have another uptrend cycle? Let us know down below. Have a good one, folks, and we'll see you in the next video.